Okay. Hello, everyone. My name is Carlo Giacometti. I work at Wolfram Research, and today I'll be talking about what is new in Wolfram Video. I will transition immediately to um, the web page that kind of showcases um, all of the features that we'll be talking about today. Um, I think uh, you should be able to find in chat a link to the same page. That's the video corridor page that kind of shows the main features um, uh, of video in the Voltram language. Uh, I'll quickly go through this and then I'll start with the presentation. Um, as maybe many of you know, uh, video is now a first class citizen. It just works. It is completely inter integrated into the language and we provide uh, lots of native functionality for capturing video, for creating videos from images, from expressions, from graphics, and all variations of that. We do provide video editing functionality. Um, we do provide um, enhancement and color correction in videos. Uh, this is very much related to all of the image um, processing functionality. Uh, we do have specific uh, face analysis functions and video analytic functions as well, uh, where you can operate efficiently um, on whole videos, having memory of what happened before, et cetera, et cetera. Um, leveraging all of the machine learning functionality, we do have uh, uh, functions that do object detection and tracking. And this is obviously very much related to the computer vision uh, area of capabilities. And linking to the audio processing, um, it is very easy to apply any kind of audio processing or analysis to audio tracks that live within video files. And we do have uh, a very extensive uh, support for both formats and codecs uh, for videos. Uh, so I do encourage you to uh, go visit the Video Correria page, click on the links, explore. Um, it is a pretty fun one. Uh, with that said, I will start my presentation. Um, so as I said, I will give a quick overview of uh, what we have uh, in the Wolfram language uh, that is related to um, video, video objects, video processing, video analysis, video computation in general, I would say. Um, so first of all, um, in case you have never seen it, um, this is what a video object looks like. So here I am creating a video from um, a file that's somewhere on the internet. Um, it gives you a nice, Playable GUI. Um, and maybe if we want the audience to also uh, listen, maybe I will set the correct um, audio device. And let me share the sound as well. Sorry about that. But hopefully, now the sound is coming through as well. So nice little player, nothing fancy, just convenient. Uh, the video file could be stored in a cloud object. And similarly, you got exactly the same thing. And um, it could be a local file as well. And you can definitely compute information and properties of it. You can see here, I get durations, raster sizes, and information about the video tracks, including the encoder, well, the encoding, and the frame rate, information about the audio tracks, et cetera, et cetera. Um, functions like duration work directly on the video. Functions like image dimension works directly on the video, or audio channels as well. So this kind of is um, hinting at a theme that we'll look at today, the functionality that was originally developed for other data, for example, image or audio in this case, has then been overloaded to work natively on videos um, to seem familiar 
and to provide a, an easy entry point to the user that is already familiar with other areas of the Wolfram language. Uh, by the way, if you have any questions, um, feel free to post them in chat and I'll try to reply them as well as I can. So um, I will start talking about how to generate videos. We've seen how to um, create videos from files, from remote files, cloud objects, et cetera, et cetera. But what if I want to generate a, a video from scratch or from by processing a different video? Um, snippets video is a function that uh, takes an input video and then a list of times or a list of intervals. And this will trim that video around. And it is kind of a convenient way of extracting salient clips from a longer video. Um, grid video instead, uh, the idea is that um, you can create a synchronized collage of videos. In this case, I have this set of videos in a folder. Uh, there's the cat that you can never go wrong with, other cats, some dogs. And with grid video, they are all placed on the same canvas and synchronized. And you can see how it can be stirred. And that works very easily. And there are options to control how this looks, uh, like background and spacings, et cetera, et cetera. And if you want to control the positions of videos, you can also use a, a matrix. And you can use missing to indicate where you'll have blank spaces. In this case, I injected two blank spaces in the um, second row, first column, and first row, second column. Um, the synchronization is exactly the same. And lastly, another way of creating videos from videos is overlay video, uh, where you can take an existing one and place some overlay on top of it. In this case, we just have this image of a spiky. Um, in another case, you can also overlay a video onto another video. And in this case, they are synchronized and overlaid. Um, the overlay can also be uh, a function of time. In this case, I'm overlaying to the video with the curse. I'm overlaying the spiky, which is rotating. Um, as a function of time. So this gives me this nice rotating and bouncy spike in that lower right corner. And you can control the placement as well of the overlay. So there are some easy way to create videos. As an aside, I want to uh, point out a few common uh, video generation options that you can specify in all the functions that I'm talking about uh, today that generate videos. You can control the encoding. And you can see here we have a, a pretty extensive list. Um, different encoders will, will have different performances. Some will be faster to write. Some will be faster to read. Some will be more compressed. Some will be less compressed, et cetera, et cetera. Um, some will support alpha channels. Um, but yeah, the, the choice is left to the user. Uh, there are some defaults, obviously, um, but um, there is a huge variety that uh, can be used depending on the application. Um, another important common option is generated as a location that controls. Since with videos, we're always talking about files, either on the internet, on the Wolfram Cloud, or on your local machines. It's always a file somewhere, right? Uh, so the generated as location will let will let you control where that uh, file will live, and you can specify it. For example, like this, um, I am generating a new file in my home directory. You can also specify a directory, so then this file will be automatically named in the directory that specified. And there is a dollar variable. Um, generically, the the value. Um, let's look at this, for example, in local options. 
of video generator, we can see that generated asset location is um, set as a rule delayed to the value dollar generated location. So you can, um, for example, if you did this, um, all of the video generating functions will end up producing file within this directory. This is kind of a convenient global way of changing the behavior of anything that generates videos. Um, another option that is important is raster size. Very intuitive. How big is the frame that you're generating? And many of the functions that I'll be looking at today, both generating and, and processing, um, support parallelize. Um, in this case, uh, I can um, just generate something that is kind of slow. The rasterization operation is, takes some time. And using parallelize, the frame generation part of the operation is effectively parallelize over all of the available kernels. And this, depending on what you're doing, can give you significant speed ups. So these are kind of things that are good to keep in mind uh, when generating videos. Uh, back to video generation in general. Um, slideshow video um, is something that makes it easy to generate a video from a list of images. Um, it just has some image for some amount of time. And is it easy to control how long an image is shown um, by uh, specifying the time for each image individually? So this will last one second, this will last two, and this will last five. And similarly, a time series can be used. Um, the advantage of a time series is that it has some uh, interpolation between the points. Recording in uh, progress. Between. And you can see how it, it does essentially a fading transition. This is um, exploited in the video generation as well. Um, another important video generation function that I feel like is the probably the easiest to use um, <clears throat> for someone that is already familiar with the Wolfram language. Um, then has experience with using uh, important constructs like manipulator table. Let me show you the comparison. Um, so here I am creating a manipulator with a variable t that runs from zero to one that produces a constant image uh, with a hue um, that depends on that variable t. If I scroll that variable t, I get this change in um, hue of the image. Animation video works exactly the same. Um, I have a generic expression. I have a variable specification. Um, unlike um, unlike manipulate, um, animation video only supports one variable at a time. But obviously, if one has multiple variables, they can always be parameterized as a function of uh, a single one. So yeah, this video should be exactly the same as that manipulator we have seen. So the hope is that this construct will be very familiar to people that are already users of the Wolfram language. And in general, I feel like it is a reasonably simple concept to understand. Um, yeah, uh, the syntax again, same as manipulator and table. Here I am defining a rot variable that goes from zero to two pi. And I am just rotating the image of the cute dog um, of um, uh, image rotate. So generating the frames. And we have the rotating cute dog. Again, super easy to use in terms of syntax. Um, and I've shown you functions that produce images like image rotate and constant image. But animation video also works with stuff that evaluates to um, some graphic. And that will just be asterized. So here I am um, solving some differential equation. And 
um, I am animating the 3D solution, the 3D visualization of the solution to that differential equation. Um, yeah, I've just created a video of a complicated mathematical structure with almost zero effort. As you can see, this is just a contour plot um, of the solutions um, animated through a variable A that runs from minus two to two. Um, and other video generating functions. And, and yeah, we do have a lot of video generating functions because we do feel like that is an important part of, um, of video for the Wolfram language, right? Um, you might be a user of the Wolfram language in some completely unrelated topic, uh, but you might want the output of whatever you're producing to be transferred into a video to share on social media, or it might just be the uh, easiest way to communicate what you're trying to communicate. So we are trying to provide as many ways to produce videos easily as possible. Frame list video and frame table video um, are, I think, the simplest of these. They just take a list of frames and they chuck them into a video. So. Um, this generates the video, this extracts all the frames. And as you can see, the frames of the video are just these images. Um, frame table video is exactly the same thing. Um, the only difference is that it doesn't really um, require to have all the images in memory already. Um, it is hidden into the video context. It hasn't made it into a system function yet, but is easy to find and hopefully easy to use. It works uh, exactly like table. You can see here um, how I define a file variable and then have it iterate over a list of files and that just generates exactly the same thing. So uh, it's just a cheeky alternative that um, might be convenient in terms of memory usage. Another high level video generation function is called tour video. <clears throat> and the idea is pretty straightforward. You have some two dimensional construct, which might be an image, might be a graphics object, and you want to um, kind of pan and zoom and explore um, that two dimensional construct. So for example, you start with a giant image like this one, I'm delete it so my notebook is then not popped down. As you can see, pretty giant. And then you can specify the steps of the uh, tour that you're taking around this two dimensional uh, construct. Uh, you can see I have step one, which tells me I want it centered around this position with this width. And step two tells me that I want to be centered at this position with a much smaller width. So we'll move and kind of zoom in at the same time. And I see that uh, there is one question about what happens of um, images of varying aspect ratios. That is a very good question. I can, um, I can show immediately, I think, within here. So, if I, let's say I just crop this image um, to a completely different aspect ratio. Um, let's see, can I do this? Let's do what I want. Oh, that did something strange, but it definitely got some copy. Um, you can see how the <clears throat> image is stretched in the video generation. Now, um, if you want to specify how this is handled, you can specify the um, confirmation method option. Um, let's see if there's some usage. Um, and you can uh, specify it uh, to do things like stretching, filling, 
um, or cropping. So, so uh, there is some default behavior, those are handled automatically, but you can control how that automatic um, um, uh, confirmation happens using this confirmation method option. Going back to um, to a video, um, another way of we've seen here we've specified two positions and widths uh, that happen at two different times. You can also specify the position, for example, as a function, or in general, everything as a function of time. Um, here, I am specifying a function that takes the time and produces a position and width. Uh, this will be the position as a function of time. And you can do exactly the same thing. And this will spiral around the image and zoom in as well. Um, you can programmatically do all this as well, right? You can take the famous physicist summit in the 20s, I think, image, maybe earlier than in the 1920s. Don't remember when this was. Anyways, you can use find faces to programmatically figure out where all of these faces are, and then find the shortest tour between all of these things. Um, we can see all the faces right here. And uh, you can just give to video the image and the position um, of all of these. And um, this will just generate a video uh, zooming over each face. So this way we programmatically generate um, some two rather than uh, manually specifying like we've done in the previous examples. There is video generation from webcams. Um, so, yep, we have our trusty video capture that works as you'd expect. It has a nifty preview that hopefully works okay. And you can just record. And this will produce a nice video. And um, similarly, you can do exactly the same from screens. Record what is happening on my screen. And this will produce another video. Um, so th these are utility. I'm sure um, everyone has uh, fancier video recording software. But this gets the job done and it works right from the notebook and produces not a file, but a, an actual video object. So that is um, can be kind of convenient. Um, now, moving to video editing. Um, uh, and here I'm just giving a quick overview of the basic things that can be done. Um, you can do temporal editing with video trim, video split, video join, video delete, video replace. Uh, so here we have our video goldfinch. That is about 15 seconds long and you can trim it and extract the part between seconds one and two. You can similarly video split it. If you want this uh, video join, as well. And all of these do pretty much what you'd expect from their names. Um, one thing that is kind of uh, less intuitive than splitting and joining and deleting and replacing is combining. When you're combining different videos, the, the tracks are just stacked on top of each other. So for example, if I combine video one and video two, the resulting video will have the video tracks from both of these that play at the same time. And you will be able to select which track is playing in this, in the menu from the GUI. Um, in this case, we only have multiple audio tracks and multiple subtitle tracks. Video combine can also be a, a useful tool for combining a video that doesn't have any audio and you can just combine any kind of audio signal with the video. Um, image editing functions, as I've mentioned before, um, a, a lot of them have been overloaded to just accept videos um, as inputs. 
So if we have um, oh, one question, um, does screen capture return a video without or without sounds? You can see here, if I look at, um, oh, sorry, screen capture, let's look at uh, information of um, out 190. Um, Oh, let's do it like this. You can see here it returns by default um, just the video screen capture. Uh, however, it does have an audio input device option that by default is set to none. If I look at the options. Well, I guess it is set to automatic, but by default, there is no uh, sound capture. But if, as long as you specify something that is not none, it will capture synchronizing a synchronized audio as well. Um, yep, yeah, so I was saying um, image functions now just take video, for example. Um, so here I am cropping the video of the bird um and just this dimension similarly image rotate that's the same um color negate is another example of image uh, processing function that has been overloaded um image effect as well has been overloaded so there is a lot of um, um, room for creative effects as well. Um, another thing that we introduced in, um, I think, 13.2, so fairly recent, is all of these all of these functions, right? You have image effect, for example, and stripling, or um, image rotate 20 degrees. And this will rotate all of the frames by the same amount. What if you wanted to have a rotation that evolved as the video evolves? Um, so in this case, you can specify a function uh, where the, the function is a function of time. So this will rotate each frame by this amount where uh, slot will be the time at that frame. So uh, at time two, um, it will just be rotated by four pi divided the duration. And uh, you can get stuff like this. Obviously, this is just a silly example, but um, it shows the um, how powerful this kind of syntax is. Um, or image effect, for example, um, you can see how this is a pure function as well. It takes the time as an argument. And let me reset the playback. And you can see how the nested composition parameter evolves over time um, or image transformation as well. Where you have the function, the transformation function that is a time evolving function as well. Um, and it is very easy to um, apply any kind of um, uh, audio processing to videos. So if I have something like this, this is just a video object. Um, if I just specify audio of that, I get an audio object that uh, is just the audio track of um, that video object. And with audio track apply, I, I can apply any kind of function to the audio track. And then I, this produces a video with the transformed audio. And in fact, if I look at the spectrogram of that, you can see how this was high pass filtered. So a lot of different processing uh, functionality that draws from both the image processing code base and the audio processing code base. And, kind of provides a way that should be already familiar 
um, to act on video objects. And we have some generic functions that do video processing as well and video analysis. These are kind of um, very powerful uh, constructs. Um, oh, before I get to that, another question, is there a limit to the max frame rate of the footage? Well, it all depends which codec is being used. Um, I think there are limitations uh, that are codec dependent. You'll have to, whichever codec you're using, you'll have to um, get yourself informed on uh, what that would be. However, all of those should be hard coded. Uh, so you could specify whatever and that will modif be modified. So if, for example, if you say video generator of something and a frame rate that is higher than the codec supports, um, we internally should be able to renormalize that to the maximum value supported by the codec. But yeah, I'd assume there is a limit to the max frame rate. I, I just, uh, it just, it's a codec dependent thing and I don't know what the exact thing is. Um, so generic functions, video frame map. Um, this is pretty straightforward in what it does. Uh, let me um, give the easiest example of this. Uh, so for example, I want to map color negate on the video of the weird fish. Um, and this does just that. This, this takes this function and applies it to each frame of the video and produces an output video. Um, you could also do uh, something like this. Uh, you can, the second argument tells you how this is done, right? Um, but in the default, you take frame by frame. If I specify the second argument, this is the second and third argument are kind of work like kind of partition does. So this takes partitions of 10 frames and skips 10 frames. So in this case, blend is applied to a list of 10 images. And as you can see, those frames are blended. So there is kind of motion blur. Um, super straightforward, um, but it, the, com the complexity of this will be defined by the function that the user will use here in the first argument. Video map is kind of the same idea, but instead of just uh, passing um, a frame or an image to the function that is specified to the user, um, video map uh, passes a whole set of uh, data. Um, we can see what that is. We can see what that is doing something silly like this. So this will do the first iteration. And you can see how video map provides me with the frame index, the input frame index, the current time, the time interval that corresponds to the frame, the actual frame, and the audio snippet that is synchronized with that frame. So in this case, I can um, apply a function that uh, depends both on the image and the audio track. Um, and here I have an association of two functions. One that is the function that produces the signal and the other, the, the frame, and the other is the function that produces the audio. This just um, transfer the audio track to the result in this case. And you can see how the hue changes in a synchronized way with the audio track. Again, simple function, uh, the complexity all lies in whatever the user will specify in this first argument. And it, this is a whole uh, family of things, right? Video frame map, video map, video map in series. Video map produces video. Video map in series takes the same kind of function with the same kind of arguments, but um, places the output of the user function into a time series. Uh, so for example, here I'm, I'm looking at the uh, intensity centroid of the video or something related to the intensity centroid. 
and I'm putting the result of that in a time series. Um, oops, click the wrong thing. And as you can see, I just get a time series of that. And I can use that time series um, to control, for example, uh, the creation of something using overlay video and taking the input video. And then I'm producing a point whose position is determined by that time series. So you can see here the point will be located where the centroid of the frame is. And similarly, video map list, sometimes video map time series um, is bound to fail just because the output result is time series and that has restrictions on what the dimensions of things are. Um, in this case, dominant colors produces a list of different dimensions at each frame. Um, so this fails miserably. Video map list does exactly the same thing, but instead of um, populating a time series with the results, it populates a list. So here you just look at the dominant colors of each frame for, uh, yeah, so for example, the, these are the dominant colors of frame one, frame two, frame three, et cetera, et cetera. So these are um, two video processing function, video frame map and video map, and two video analysis function, video map time series and video map list. And they all kind of work in the same thing, just the, in the same way, just the output is different and um, I would say uh, very much depends on the application, which one you would choose. Um, some slightly more funny examples. Um, this is just a video of some waves on the beach and I can solve the equation, the di differential equation for a bouncing ball as a function of time. Um, and then I can just uh, overlay video of the beach video, and then the uh, this this is just an image of a beach ball, and this rotates as a function of time and moves uh, as a function of time as well. So you can get funny things as well. So you can combine like solution of differential equations and video generations very easily. Um, obviously, this is a silly example, but um, um, who doesn't like silly examples? Um, in this case, I am downloading a video on the dog running across uh, the frame. And what I am def doing here is defining a function that takes a frame and uh, calculates the position of a dog within that frame. This is one of the machine learning based functions that we have within the whole image processing uh, um, suite. And the way to apply that to all frames, as we've seen before, is just do video map time series of the function that finds the dog all across V, which is the video. And I'm, as you can notice here, I'm using parallelize to speed up that detection. Uh, and here I'm just overlaying the original video with the parametric plot of the position as a function of time. Uh, let's go to the beginning. So now the video appears, and now uh, image position starts tracking it. And uh, yeah, so you have a easy combination of image processing, computer vision, machine learning, and video analysis and video generation in uh, a single simple example. Um, this was based on an um, example and that was uh, made for the release of version 12. So a little while ago, um, but um, now the video generation part is much more streamlined. Um, it takes a picture of a car and a mask, and it has some functionality to um, uh, look at uh, compute contours uh, derived from the image. Um, 
those are applied to the image using full list and then they are uh, overlaid onto the image itself. So you can get this funny drawing effect as well. Another topic that I want to, uh, I've already mentioned a little bit, but um, machine learning for video. Um, we do have a set of uh, video networks in the Voltron neural net repository. Um, not many at the moment. Um, there are uh, many more in the pipeline that will uh, be released soon. Um, however, it is very easy to process videos using the frame map or similar uh, using image networks. Uh, and here the list is pretty extensive. Um, I will, I have here, oh no. Well, something happened. Um, let me reopen that um, notebook. Oh, that was mildly unfortunate. Okay, let's see if we can restore our presentation. Um, okay, so we have a YOLO variation that we retrieve very easily from the neural net repository. This might take a second to uh, wake up. Um, and we've defined some utility functions here to um, post-process the um, output of the network as well. Um, so these should be standard operations uh, for anyone that has dealt with neural networks before. Um, we have a simple video. Hopefully we'll be in a second. Here we go. Just a cute dog running around. Um, well, there's something silly here. Um, I can display a pre-computed output. You can see what happens um, if you apply the network on a frame of the video. It, it produces bounding boxes um, that are classified. So it knows that uh, this is dog and it gives me a bounding box and all of these are people and it gives me bounding boxes for those. So I can easily define um this um this function here so i am highlighting the frame um and with the result of the network on the same frame and as a result a uh, a video where this is classified frame by frame following the dog following all the objects that are appearing in focus um so again this is um, an easy way to um, exploit all of the um, very powerful computer vision functionality, neural network functionality directly onto videos. Um, I want also to showcase a few things um, from users. Um, I recommend looking at Wolfram community, uh, at the video processing group, for example. There is a lot of activity there. Uh, There's one example taking an input video and um, making a cartoon version of it. Um, there is also a lot of, uh, there is also some contribution in the Wolfram function repository from users. Um, for example, the color map uh, produces a, 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 an image with the colors of each frame within the video. There's um, video reverse that takes a video and Reverse, reverses the whole thing. 
Um, and I'm expecting more contribution to the Wolfram function repository, both from external users and from us as well. If there is something that we find is useful, but doesn't um, really deserve to get promoted to the system context, we will probably just put it um, in the function repository. So these are the main things I wanted to make sure to touch on today, uh, all of the more basic usages and all the important usages, I would say, of video in the Wolfram language. Um, I wanted to quickly mention a couple of more advanced topics. So how, how all of this works is, um, Oh, sorry, there is one question is, is there some kind of watermark that can be applied to videos? Well, that is what I showed earlier, right? If uh, there is no function that does that, that does explicitly watermark, but for example, with overlay video, you can uh, create whatever uh, watermark, place it and place it wherever you want. And in this case, you just have it overlaid over there original video. This can be any kind of image, transparent, non-transparent, doesn't matter. So that's this is how I would uh, deal with uh, producing a watermark overlay to frames. Um, yeah, so how do we do all this? Um, the main ingredient that we have to um, produce videos, uh, read videos, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, is the FFmpeg uh, library. This is used uh, as a backend through the FFmpeg tools backlog. And if you look at it, it is right there within the layout. Um, so one thing to note, we do ship a version of FFmpeg within Mathematica, but uh, because of um, licensing restrictions on several codecs, it means that uh, we don't natively ship all codecs. Um, but what users can do and what we point out users to do is to install independently a full version of a FMPEG on their system. And, and the first time you use the video functionality, if you don't have it installed already, um, Mathematica will pop up a dialog that will give you some instructions on how, how to do that on the different platforms. It is very straightforward. Um, it, on Mac, for example, you can use Mac or sort of Brew um, on Linux, usually uh, is supported by the distribution that you're using on Windows. And um, we can handle all of the download and install from within the Mathematica session. So uh, it should be easy for users to um, get the most out of it by installing um, the full version of FFmpeg on their system. And the fact that we use this FFmpeg tools packlet comes with some advantage. Um, all of this low level functionality um, is not particularly user friendly, but it is um, it is available to all users. If you look here, I'm looking at the FFmpeg tools back video context. Um, and it is documented, at least a, a bare bones version of documentation. So if anyone wants to go really as close to the C++ level as possible, this is um, the way to do it. Um, and this is how we've built all of the video functionality in Mathematica in the Wolfram language by uh, interfacing the C++ code in the FMPEG tools packlet uh, with uh, uh, Wolfram language. So if anyone wants to uh, be as efficient as possible or do uh, complicated operations, that this is a good place to start. Um, there is no guarantee that the API for this pilot will not change um, version to version, um, but it is a good exploration playground. Um, another thing, kind of advanced topic is um, FFmpeg natively, comes with a lot of different filters. Uh, so for example, let's see, video filters. Um, this is something that applies a blur filter. And there is a giant list of, of all of these. 
And we do have a shortcut to um, apply um, any kind of filter in this case. Um, we define our video. Spelling is a useful skill. Um, in this case, I am just using um, the reverse filter. So this is just that video backward. Or here, I'm using the pixelized filter uh, and specifying some parameters. And you could even, I think, you should be able to apply a list of two filters, first um, pixelizing and then reverting. So the syntax for this is, is not too complicated. Um, so this is filter name. Um, and then a rule of parameter goes to value. And in this case, I am applying two filters, one after the other, and the second filter doesn't have any parameter. So again, these are very advanced usages that are not documented. They might change over time. Um, it is just something that if uh, if you know your oper the operation that you want to do, and you know that there is an FMPEG filter that is very efficient, um, this could give you significant time uh, and memory savings. This is just something that is interesting to know about. And with that, I will point you again to the video Correa page. Do explore there. And I think that is pretty much all of the things I wanted to make sure to present today. And let me know if you have any questions.